Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Southport in the Premier League and now in the Europa League as well. It is season 11 with the Sandgrounders. It's going to be a big season. I'm hoping this is going to be a season where we are successful either in the league or in Europe. Ideally both. I don't want to be anywhere near a relegation scrap this year, particularly at the start of the season. As it is the start of the season, we've obviously got some transfers to talk about and we've got one big transfer to talk about, which could be a make or break transfer for us. It's Miro Butic. It's Miro Butic. He has left the club. He has signed for Spurs. He's gone for £90 million because he had a minimum fee release clause in there. Miro Butic is gone for £90 million and I haven't replaced him. That's the big risk. That's the risk. I could have reinvested that money. I didn't reinvest the money. Time will tell whether that was a good decision. Also leaving the club is Logan McCrecky. He has gone to AEK in Greece for silly money. Absolute silly money. £20 million, potentially rising to £30 million. I couldn't turn that down. He's not very good. He's not very good at all. Maybe he's got loads of potential or something that I'm not aware of. But yeah, Logan McCrecky has gone for just stupid amounts of cash. And he wasn't the only one to go for stupid amounts of cash to Greece. Edson Helou has also gone to Greece. This time he's gone to Olympiakos and he's gone for £21.5 million, potentially rising to £27 million. I don't know why clubs are spending so much money on below par players, but I'm happy with it because we're reaping all the rewards. Daniel Acuna, the Mexican central defender, has also left the club on a permanent deal. We have got rid of his £165,000 a week wage. He has signed for Norwich for, I think, about £7 million, potentially going up to 10 Yeah, 7 potentially to 10 We are still paying some of his wages. I don't know where we can see it. There we go, £46,000 a week for the next two seasons. So we're still paying some money for him, but we're not paying £165,000 a week for a player who basically wasn't good enough to play for us. The final player that we will talk about leaving the club then is Karamo Kokone, the now 26-year-old Ivorian goalkeeper, has left and signed for VFL Wolfsburg in Germany. He just wasn't good enough. If I'm honest, he didn't really develop as much as I needed him to. He's never really going to play enough football for us. I mean, he did play 105 times for us, which is about 100 times more than he really deserved. But don't worry, we've replaced him with a backup goalkeeper, somebody who you will know pretty well from a few seasons ago. It's Ulysses Terrazas, the 25-year-old American international, has rejoined the club from Derby County, where he played 167 times. He was there for a very, very long time. He was transfer listed. I picked him up for £4.4 million. So not only have we got back a very good player, we've made money on him. And I'm pretty sure we got 50% of that as well. He is he's not going to play for us. He's not going to play a lot of football. He's come in as our backup goalkeeper. And you might be wondering, why did I really need to get myself a new backup goalkeeper? I didn't, but he's English. He's English, and I think he technically counts as towards the home, whole homegrown thing. So, you know, we needed a decent English goalkeeper. This is kind of a theme with the transfer window. I tried to get in some English players. Another English player that we've signed from Derby County has cost a lot of money. And I'm not sure why I've really thrown this amount of money at him. It's based off of one thing. It's based off of this here, labelled the next Michael Owen. I'm hoping that that's right, because at the moment I'm not seeing anything. My scouts were like, get him, get this boy, he's amazing. Like 90% out of 100 there and there going, you need to sign Jared Annabelle. So we've done it. One and a half star current ability, four star potential. He's cost £12 million. It's, it's a huge number. It's a big number. Considering we with 12 12 million pounds, it's a waste. It's definitely a waste. But by the time he's 21, if he's in the England side, it's not a waste of money, probably. Two more players to talk about before we get into the biggest transfer of our history. Zlot Kiss is first up, a 19-year-old Hungarian striker with two two goals to his name and eight under eight caps. That's the best way of explaining that. He's been brought in for one and a half million pounds. Two and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential on Zlot. I think he's decent. I brought him in because Juve and AC Milan were after him. So there's definitely something there. I don't know if he's going to play for us for this season. We might try and loan him out. But yeah, he's, he's decent. I think he's a good option. He's a good youngster. 
He's got plenty of time to develop. Another good youngster with plenty of time to develop is Swiss attacking midfielder and left winger Marco Cornioli. He has two-star current ability, but five-star potential on Marco. He's been brought in for one and a half million pounds, much like Zlotkis. Signed from Inter Zabrasek, whoever they are in Switzerland. Again, this is one where my scouts went, do it. Do it. Throw all the money at them. So I did. I threw them half one and a half million pounds because that's all they wanted. And I think he's good. I think there's definitely something there. Maybe he's lacking in some of the mental stats. But for an 18-year-old who's only just turned 18 as well. His birthday was on the 2nd of August. I think he's decent. Probably not going to play a lot of football for a season or two. But maybe in a couple of years' time, he might be replacing Rourke Murray and whoever else is our left winger at that point. And the big one then. For £30 million for a left-back, our biggest signing is a left-back, it's Sebastian Mercier, 24 years old. He is a Belgian left-back, 3.5-star current ability, 3.5-star potential, so apparently he's not going to get better, but he is what I look for in a fullback. He's attacking, he's very attacking, he can cross, he can dribble, physically he's all there, mentally he's all there, he can also tackle, which is something very handy, and one thing that is also very handy, he's English. He's part English. He's been at Southampton for long enough to become English. He's played a lot of football for them as well. He will be our number one left back because Aaron Granger has returned to Leicester and they didn't want to reloan him to me. So yeah, we had to basically go somewhere else. Sebastian Mercier is that somewhere else. So yeah, that's it. The transfer window is closed as well. There is some loan business as well taking place. Eric Mensah has actually left the club going to Sheffield Wednesday on a free. Neil McCloskey to Reading on loan. Chad Saunders to Easley, Kieran Mackey to Whitby, apparently. These are players that you've never heard of, because I've never heard of them either. Uh, Janos Komodi also going out on loan to a Ferenc Faros in his native Hungary as well. So this is our first team squad, if we sort by what we're training by. This is our first team squad. And if you want to see me go into more detail about our first team squad, there will be a link, hopefully in the description, where I will go through literally every one of these players so you can get a better understanding of what they're like, because I've realised... I haven't done this for like 10 seasons. So players like Varro and Milosevic and Mendes, players who we signed a long time ago now for some of them, you haven't seen any of their development. So you can actually take a look at that video and you can see how well they've got and why they're basically playing a lot of football for us now. So yeah, that is our transfer business for this season or for the summer at the very least. Obviously, January, there might be some more business. We are lacking central midfielders. We've got £114 million still to spend in January. We've got a lot of cash. We've got a lot of cash to burn. What we're going to do in this episode, we're going to go forward and we're going to play Bournemouth, I think. That's what we're going to go for. So I'm going to play Palace off camera. I'm then probably going to play Southampton as well as part of this episode, but we might just do a highlights package for that one because I imagine we're already about 10 minutes into this episode. When is the Europa League group stage draw taking place? That's what we need to know. The 31st of August. Right then. So what we're going to do this episode, we will be going to the 31st of August. So we'll play Bournemouth. We'll have a Southampton highlights package. And we will also have our Europa League group stage draw for our first ever expedition into Europe. I can't wait. We're going to get battered in the group stages, aren't we? Well, that certainly was an interesting opening game of the season. I'm annoyed I didn't record it because I was angry. I was very angry. I was losing losing a lot of patience for this game and we still managed to win. Our goalkeeper got a man of the match award as well. You name it, it happened. Everything happened in this match. We beat Crystal Palace 3-2. Tails Wesley, the right back, scored. Itabel also scored a minute after Wesley. It then went to three, sorry, 2-1. Keith Craig, and then he said Craig Keith. Keith Craig scores for Palace. We then go into the second half. Palace then equalise through Alan Arredondo. We then get Javier Leal sent off. Palace then have a penalty, which they miss. Damien Tilger then goes up the other end of the pitch. Scores a goal in the 88th minute to give us the winner. Varro got an 8.6 rating. I have never seen a goalkeeper get anywhere near an 8.6 rating. Varro had the game of his life. Wang picked up an injury as well. As I mentioned, Liao getting a red card also. We would have been the main event on match of the day for that night. We had to have been. That was just arguably the most bonkers game of football I've seen in Football Manager in a very long time. And we managed to win. We've now got to play Bournemouth, who hopefully this should be a somewhat more easy game. I'm hoping this is an easier game. 
Also, we've gone and got ourselves a new feeder club. It's Brisbane Raw in Australia. And the only reason why we've gone for Brisbane Raw is because they're managed by Robbie Fowler. He's been there since 2019, so the start of the game. And I thought, you know, it's it's the Liverpool connection. Is he actually Scouse? He is Scouse, yeah. So he, he probably he knows of Southport. He knows of his existence and everything. So yeah, this is our current set of feeder clubs. Billericay, it's Brisbane Raw, Eastley, HB China Fortune and at Skelmersdale. Although I think Skelmersdale, we just play a friendly. Yeah, we don't really do anything at all. Also, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but Millet is transfer listed. He was here for one season, scored 27 goals, propelled us to the Premier League. He then left, went to Sevilla. He's apparently 84% as well. He's susceptible to injuries. But he's Sebastian Millet. I mean, he's, is he good? He's going to cost £31.5 million to buy him. I kind of want him, you know. You might have to wait until January to see if this happens. Anyway then, let's play Bournemouth, who I think have just been promoted. Yes, they have just been promoted. So they got relegated the season we came up. So, or the sorry, they got relegated in our first season, didn't they? So we haven't played them too often. They've only just been promoted. I'm hoping this should be three points in the bag. Our first game at the newly renovated Southport Stadium, which, surprise, surprise, is sold out. The starting lineup then for the Bournemouth game. We are sticking with our 4-1-2-3 DM wide gig and press because it seems to do a job. It's done a job for the last few seasons. It's going to be Varro in goal. Matheson will be a left back today because... Both of our fullbacks, Liao is currently suspended and Mercia is currently injured, so Matheson is going to have to make do as being a left back today. It's Mendes, Lescano, and Tails as the rest of our back four. Canate, Wang, and McKenney in the middle of the pitch with Tilga, Saulo, and Itabel as our strikers. I will just show you Canate quickly. He will become our deep lying playmaker. He can't really play there at the moment, but he has he has the attributes. He certainly has the attributes, so he's going to be that Miro Butic replacement. Not looking forward to when we play Spurs, when we have to play against Miro Butic. Now I'd like a nice, calm match against Bournemouth in front of a sellout at the Southport Stadium. I'd love a nice, calm match. Maybe a 2-0 victory. That will do. I'll be happy with that. We've got a free kick. It's Tilga. Steps up with a left-footed effort. It's a great save from Syme. We won ourselves a corner in front of the Bournemouth fans. I've just noticed we've expanded the stadium and still not filled in the corners. Tilga's corner comes in. It's gone over everybody. Canate's going to hopefully get there first. Asane Canate, the Frenchman, finds Tails Wesley, who scored the opening goal of the season from right back. Saints are top of the Premier League. End the season now. Just end the season now. Saints will become champions of England. There's a throw. Lucas to Phillips. Phillips has some company in front of him. Back to Lucas. I think it's Tilga chasing the ball around like a seven-year-old. Fafana has the ball across to Lucas again. I'm definitely, that's definitely Tilga, isn't it? Hayem. Hayem across. Centre circles Diakite. He's going to play the ball across to the right-hand side. Silva has it now. Matheson's in front. Crosses it in. Wang plays it back to Matheson, which is a questionable thing to do. Mendes, long ball upfield. Finds Itabel, who so far has done all right in his first game of the season. McKenney to Matheson. He's going to have to cut inside because he's not left-footed. Finds Wang in the middle. Jumps a tackle. Damien Tilga, long-range effort. And Damien Tilga gets his second goal of the season does a forward roll in front of the Bournemouth fans as well we're 1-0 up against Bournemouth in front of a sellout at the Southport Stadium season starting well the season is starting very well. end the season now we'll finish second we've got a corner Tilga steps up towards the back Mendes is there Mendes is headed effort finds its way over the goalkeeper it's 2-0 17 minutes 50 seconds on the clock this match is over I was literally 2-0 up against Palace so maybe it's not over. That match was was a nightmare. Maybe this one's maybe this one's still got more legs to go. Oh Fahati to McNeil. Is that Dwight McNeil? Back to Phillips. Is that Calvin Phillips as well? It is. Fafana. Fafana across finds Gedson on the right hand side. Matheson closes him down. Crossfield ball. Lescano doesn't manage to get the header. The headed effort instead goes well over the bar from the Bournemouth man. Varro's goal kick to Lescano. I wasn't sure about playing Mendes today alongside Les Carno or Bra Bamba because I'm, I mentioned before I want to play Bamba he's good he's real good but oh my word Tilga what are you doing but he's just not as good as Mendes and Les Carno but Bamba's good it's it's a it's a weird conundrum that I find myself in Bournemouth have found their way back into this game in the first half they've had a few more shots now but we are 2-0 to the good it is going to be 2-0 at half time we are looking decent I'd like a third definitely like a third I mean Colo says don't say anything no um, I want to say, don't get complacent. Is that a thing? 
cautiously. I'm very happy. I've said it cautiously. I don't know why saying it cautiously makes a difference. Right, we are going to do Itabel off and Saulo off at some point, probably for Everard and Barriero. So Barriero will be making his debut today. We've got a corner. Who's taken it? It is... It's Canate. I nearly said Seku. It's Alsana Canate. It's not the best corner. Western McKenney, though. Oh, my word. The American, the old man of the squad at 30 years old, or 31, maybe, makes it 3-0 against Bournemouth with an absolute rocket from outside the area. This is definitely three points. We've got the goal. We've got the buffer that we needed. Let's do our two subs. Itabel off for Barriero. Saulo off for Everard. I was going to do Rot Murray, but no, we want Everard. Everard's decent. He needs to play football. Throw for Tails to Tilga. Back to Tails. He's going to run down the wing. It doesn't play to Tilga instead. Barriero wants to try and find the ball into the middle. Instead, just passes it straight to the former Burnley man, Dwight McNeil. Tails, the world's greatest right back, nicks the ball away. Canate to McKenney, rolls it forward. Tilga's there. He's got two in the middle, three in the middle, and now crosses it in. Barriero is there, and Barriero with a slide tackle. He's not getting the goal. It's going down as an own goal from Aaron Hyam, but Barriero there with the slide tackle finish, in my opinion, I'd give him a goal bonus. If I was the manager, I'd give him a goal bonus for that because he basically did everything apart from score the goal. We are second place in the Premier League. Second place, only Manchester City are ahead of us. Right, well, Everard's come on and then he's coming off again because he's picked up a knock. So Rock Murray is coming on in the end for the final 12 or so minutes. And we've got a potential Bournemouth chance. Colwell all the way back to Hyam, the own goal scorer, Phillips. Calvin Phillips, the former Leeds man. Odelson Silva tries to get past Matheson. Is he going to manage to get his cross away? Matheson is there, tries to nick it, can't manage it. Oh, Flaherty's there, and Alfio Flaherty makes it 4-1. Varro can't keep a clean sheet in this one. Varro's had nothing to do all game, absolutely nothing to do all game. He's had one shot to save. And it's managed to find its way in. We've got four minutes of injury time. It doesn't look like Bournemouth are going to come back into this. So this is going to be three more points. Three points at home. We are second in the table. We're two games in, but we're second in the table. Shut up. Not only are we second in the table, we've scored seven goals in two matches. We've scored seven goals in two matches. Have we, have we got anyone in the top scorer list? Of course we haven't. <laughs> of course we haven't. It's Mbappe's up there. Treat just scored, scored three as well. I mean, we don't score a lot of goals usually, but the fact that we've scored seven, Tilga's there with two, he's technically joined third, we'll take it. Now, what I was going to do was show highlights of the Southampton game, and I think I will do that, so the next thing you'll see will be the starting 11s for the Southampton game, and then any goals that take place, and we'll also get ourselves the Europa League draw as well. So then, Southampton time, and we've got a bit of a problem. We have an injury to Weston McKenney for three months and we don't have a lot of central midfielders. So you'll see Keith Hall is playing in the middle of the pitch today. We're going for Varro in goal. Mercia will be making his debut against his former team. Mendes, Lescano and Milosevic round off the back four. Canate, Hall and Wang in the middle of the pitch. Tilga, Saulo and Itabel will be our strikers. Having the injury to Weston McKenney is a massive, massive problem because we've only got four natural central midfielders. And now we're missing one. We're a minute and 15 on the clock and already a potential chance going our way. Cross field ball. Hall to Milosevic, the right back. He's not very good going forward. Crosses it in towards the back post. It's gone past everybody. Saulo collects it though. Saulo back to Mercia on his debut into the penalty area. Saulo crosses. Itabel's there. Can't get his shot away. Southampton clear their lines. 32 minutes now on the clock. Southampton coming forward, but Les Carnos nicked the ball away. Lumps it upfield towards Lucio Itabel. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Itabel takes a little touch to bring it past him. We are 1-0 up against Southampton. Three wins out of three at the start of the season. If this stays this way, I could not have asked for more. Southampton potentially have a chance to get straight back into this though. Robson. Ball onto the left-hand side for Valdez. Now Drake, long-range effort. Valde Valdez? Varro makes a save from Valdez. Drake back to Valdez. Once again, crosses it in. Mercia heads clear. Saulo lumps the ball upfield further. Still 1-0. We're top of the Premier League, everybody. We're top of the damn table. Almost at half-time, but there is time for one more highlight, potentially. Anthony has the ball for Saints. Runs over the halfway line towards the centre circle. Forward to Drake. He's been tackled by Milosevic, but keeps hold of the ball. Drake in on goal. Mendes with a spectacular tackle. Milosevic can then just smash the ball upfield. Valdez chests it down. Is the highlight over or is it going to continue? Ben Godfrey in the centre circle. Across to the right back, Guga. Forward to Anthony. Guga's continuing his run. 
keeps going down the the past the past past mercy but mercy actually steals the ball away from his former teammate and Saulo can now break for us he's cutting straight towards the goal Saulo's going one-on-one -on -one with the keeper is he going to make it two he does make it two and Saulo gets his first of the season a cartwheel to celebrate as well it's two nil at half time against Southampton we are top of the Premier League We've done no changes at half time because I don't think we need to do any because we are basically the better side at the moment. There is a throw for Mercia. The Saints man or former Saints man takes the throw. Anthony can get it clear. Canate, edge of the area. Pull the trigger, my friend. He's not going to do it. Instead, he does a terrible pass. Mendes heads forward. Wang to Saulo. Across Tilga, edge of the area. Goes for goal. Opposite corner from the keeper with 3-0 up against Saints. Are we going to win the Premier League? Is this something that's going to happen? Are we going to win the Premier League? I don't think we're going to, but we're, something's, something's going right, I guess. Something's going really right at the moment. Wang with a slide tackle. Itabel to Keith Hall. Forward to Tilga. If he can get a shot away, he tries to slot it through to Itabel, but the ball is cleared. Milosevic is going to slowly get to the ball. Plays it all the way back to Varro. Now Mendes. We're going to build from the back. Mendes to Saulo, who's got his first goal. Cuts inside. He's going to run forward into the penalty area. He's gone for a placed effort from a long way away. Farinez easily holds on. Right. Time to do a change. It's going to be Wang coming off. Tommy Doyle will be coming on. Itabel also coming off for Barriero. We've got ourselves a highlight, and I don't know whether this is because of the subs or because something might actually happen. Evans to Valdez for Southampton. Al Jabbar forward, back to Al Jabbar once again. We can steal this away and then potentially have a little bit of a counter attack. Proudkin. Proud Prokodin. Pro 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 Nikita Prokodin, possibly, not Proudkin. Evans down the left hand side, keeps going into the space. Is he going to get his cross away? Takes his time. Back to Valdez. Valdez makes a bit of space for himself to Ferzi. Now Robson. Now Anthony. Long range effort into the hands of the Serbian goalkeeper. So was that a highlight? I don't really know. This is a highlight though. It's Mercia to Barriero the sub. Dinks it across. Canate on the volley. And that is goal of the season. That is goal of the season right there. Alsane Canate has just scored something absolutely bloody magical. It's 4-0 against Southampton. We're watching this again. We are watching this again. That was so damn good. It wasn't... It was just on the volley as well. Postage stamp stuff as well. Keeper cannot save that. It's 4-0 against Saints. What is happening? What is happening? We've had no possession and scored four damn goals. We've got 15 minutes left to play. We're going to do ourselves another substitution. We're going to do Saulo off for Everard. I mean, Saulo's having a great game, but, you know, we're falling up. He's the best performer on the pitch. We'll bring him off. We're, we're keeping him fit, I guess. Corner for Tilga. Is it going to be five? Eight minutes left to play. Ben Godfrey heads the ball clear. Guga can now run forward. The fullback, I think, for Southampton into the right-hand side space. Everard's there. Play closes him down. Sabatin. Sabatin back to Ben Godfrey. Forward to Robson. Southampton not actually looking badly. It's just we have definitely taken our chances when they were presented to us. Fazy forward to Evans. In on goal. Slots it past the keeper but hits the post. And Mendes kicks that into the Southport fans. Three minutes of injury time to play. It is going to be three points against Southampton. And we are top of the table by two points. Because Manchester United and Manchester City were playing each other. And I think that ended as a draw. What a performance. What an absolutely ridiculous performance. I'm glad I did a little bit more in-depth highlights than I was expecting to do. Because that was superb. Absolutely superb. Everybody did their job. Three more points in the bag. Top of the Premier League. We're top of the damn Premier League. Now we've got to find out who we get in the Europa League. Would you look at that? Everyone's played three games as well. It's not like we got lucky and someone hasn't played their, sec their third match yet. No, everyone has played three games. We are the only team with a 100% winning record at the start of the season. We're going to go forward. We're going to go to the 31st of August when the Europa League draw will take place. And maybe we're going to win that as well as well like we've won the Premier League with three games in Stuart calm down are you ready are you ready for our first ever expedition into Europe we are the fourth seeds if I remove my face and myself from the uh, the screen you can see we are down there with the best of them Hertha Berlin Badoknost CSK Sofia FH from Iceland Braga Sarajevo and Norkoping from Sweden and then us with zero we have zero points because we've never been in Europe. We are making our European debut. So let's just get, let's say the first two rounds out of the way. 
and have a little summary of what we've got. Group A, I don't want to be in. I don't want to get anywhere near Juve and uh, Rangers. I don't, I don't want to touch that one. Group B, not so bad. Atalanta and CSK Moscow. Feyenoord, PAOK is an awful. We can't be in Chelsea, Galatasaray. Red Bull, Leipzig and Bruges is not a good one. We can't be with Spurs and Sporting. Valencia and Molde isn't bad. Michelin and Anderlecht also not too bad. So then, let's just work our way through. Group C is the one we want. Group C is the one we want. That's the one that I'm hoping for. And group, maybe group, group H, group C or H? C or H. So we are not in the group of death then with Juve Rangers, Athletic Bilbao, Budoknost are the unfortunate team in that one. Group B's not awful. Norkaping, this is us. This is us. Here we go. Yes, this is us. This is us. We are in with Feyenoord, PAOK and Osijek from Croatia. That is actually very, very good. I think we have a chance of getting through that group. I think we've definitely got a chance of getting through that group. Feyenoord obviously will be tough. PAOK, Salonika, that's what they're called, will also be tough. Have they been playing? They were in the Champions League and got knocked out by Basel. Right. Were Feyenoord also in the Champions League and got knocked out, or did they just end up... They were also in the Champions League and got knocked out by Dinamo. Right. Osijek? I'm imagining you just ended up... You were also in the Champions League and got knocked out by Michelin. So we are... We're the only team in that group that just qualified for the Europa League. Cool. I, I'm cautiously optimistic. I think we can do well in that group. Osijek and PAOK, okay, I think we should be able to beat Feyenoord. Might be a coin flip. But if we keep our good form that we've started the season off with, I think we can carry on that good form. And we start our Europa League expedition at home against Feyenoord as well. So that is going to be a very big match. What we're going to do next episode will be the Feyenoord match. We might also do West Brom, maybe. We might actually do Feyenoord and Everton, you know? We could do our local rivals against Everton, the team that we seem to beat fairly comfortably most of the time. So, yeah, we will be playing Liverpool Wolves in between episodes, both of them away from home. I can't imagine we're going to beat Liverpool. We've never beaten them before, apart from that one time in the Carabao Cup when we did beat them. But we haven't beaten them properly in the league when they play a full-strength side. But, yeah, that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. If you're new here and you want to see more of the Southport story and the Southport save as we've started this season so bloody well, do remember to hit the subscribe button. If you want to get notified as well, you can hit the bell and it will give you a little notification every time a new video is released. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next episode for our first ever European match as the manager of Southport. Southport's first ever European match as well. Hopefully we don't embarrass ourselves.